It's a warm summer's morning and we're out with Chris Gale stalking for Robux. Chris is a professional stalker with an intimate knowledge of where his deer are and their likely movements. Cornwall is a fantastic place for deer to thrive, with plenty of nutrient-dense vegetation for them to consume throughout the summer and winter. Today I'm shooting 150 grain Hornady American Whitetail ammunition through a Sauer 100 Pantera in 308 Winchester, topped with a Hawk Frontier 2.5 to 15 by 50 scope. This package offers great versatility for both woodland stalking and taking longer shots across the broad valley and moorlands. It doesn't take long for us to spot our first deer. A doe and kid are grazing in a nearby field. This isn't what we're looking for, but it's still great to see the deer are out feeding. As we're admiring these beautiful deer, Chris quickly spots another doe behind us on the brow of the hill. There is also a buck following closely behind. We observe for a moment, but decide to leave this buck because it's an adolescent and today we're in search of mature bucks. We move further down the valley, scanning the hillside. I use the Pulsar XQ38 thermal imager to scan the thicker parts of the valley. These paired with my Hawk Frontier EDX 8x42 binoculars make for the perfect deer stalking optical system. I spot a deer on the other side of the valley. It's a young buck that's limping. Our focus now shifts to quickly and humanely dispatching this injured deer. We observe for a moment whilst formulating a plan. We notice the deer is heading down the valley and we follow suit. We reach the bottom of the valley and begin to head closer to where we think the deer might be. The terrain becomes thicker and thus spotting becomes more difficult, along with trying to remain silent. Unfortunately, we are unable to identify where the buck has gone. As we head back up the valley, we're greeted with another sighting of deer. There is certainly a healthy population here. After some well-needed sleep from this morning's stalk, we head back out for the afternoon in search of a roebuck. Chris spends a huge amount of time carrying out reconnaissance on the land, ensuring he knows the hot spots for deer activity. It doesn't take us long to spot the first deer of the afternoon, another doe across the valley, but again, no sign of a buck. We spot another roe doe and kid enjoying some shade from the hot summer's afternoon. Even on a bright sunny day like today, I'm able to scan the darker areas of the valley.
Even though we've seen plenty of deer, we've seen no bucks that are suitable to take. Chris recommends that we move to another area in which he thinks we'll be more successful. We decide to sit with our backs against this hedgerow, in the hope of a roebuck coming out to graze on the field margin. We have a good field of view, and the key here is patience. Again, unfortunately we have no luck in seeing any mature bucks, and move on. We use the woodland as a backdrop to mask as we stalk along the edge of the field. The light is drawing in, and time is running out. Chris spots a buck and a doe on the brow of a hill, now, although this isn't a mature six-point roebuck, Chris asked me to take the buck as it's considerably smaller than it should be. This is one for the cull sheet. I quickly set the magnification on my scope and get set on the shooting sticks. I use the Endurance LRF 1500 rangefinder to ensure I have the most accurate range information to take the most advantageous shot. The buck is stood broadside and offers the perfect opportunity for a shot. So I have to say, he's a bit of a pathetic looking buck. So he's still, he's pretty weak in the, uh, in the body. As you can see, we made a pretty big hole in him as we came across. So why is it important to take out bucks like this? Well, you know, with the genetics, he was never gonna make anything. He was never gonna be a good, healthy buck. He's half the size he should be. Yeah. You know, he's, you don't want him to get older and possibly mate with a dog. No. And then obviously, the bad gene carries on. Well, now this one isn't going to pass any bad genes on. He's no. Now, the equation. now, of course, you know, this is not what we're here. We're looking for mature bucks yeah. here. Uh, but of course, as you're coming around, you've got to make sure that you're taking care of your management responsibilities as well. You've got to keep the numbers down and there are deer everywhere. You don't really want animals this week adding their gene to the gene pool because it's not going to add any benefit. So, of course, we're out for looking for mature six pointers, but it's still very important to take these as and when they come along. Thank you for taking that one for me. No, my pleasure, mate. Right, there's, there's, there's still a little bit of light left, so clean this one out and then we'll head on. So Chris, another fantastic day in the field and you have got a lot of deer here. There are one or two here, yeah, we try and look after them as best as we can. Yeah, so it must be encouraging to see so many does and so many good younger bucks kicking around. Yeah, well this like this buck you shot earlier, if that there starts paying off when you start seeing the good young bucks coming through and yeah. you're not seeing the two, three year olds that are poor quality because you've taken them out and done your job properly yeah. during the summer. So I'm quite lucky that I've, I've managed to get out there and, and, and shoot some decent bucks, good bucks with yeah. you and, and of course with, with Owen elsewhere I've been. Uh, but sometimes people forget that in order to get those big typical six pointers, nice tall with lots of mass, you've got to put the time into taking out the weaker ones and and how much time do you put into management on your ground here you it's quite a bit by the time you think of recon and just out counting deer and seeing what deer you have and just bringing in stealth cameras putting out stealth cameras it's it adds up to a lot of hours mm. it's not a five minute job and something like that that little tiny button buck there he just needs to go right yeah well it, it had a poor head and it was a, a lot smaller than it should have been it, you know, it should have been a third bigger again but anyway, I know you're always uh, disappointed when we don't go home with a giant gold medal, but unfortunately they're, they're not out there around that every corner. Um, but the great thing is I've really enjoyed the time out here. Spectacular countryside, Cornwall is just an amazing place to go as a destination for field sportsmen. It's not just uh, the deer stalking you offer here, you do woodcock and yeah, wild fowling. Woodcock, wild fowling and snipe shooting as well. So just about everything you could possibly want to do yeah, for field sportsmen. Yeah, if you want to do it in the countryside we can probably organise it. 
Perfect. Well, Chris, thank you very much indeed again. No worries. Had a great day and uh, looking forward to doing it all again.